In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Numbers chapter 14, verses 39 through 45, where we'll answer the question, why was Israel defeated? Numbers 14, 39 through 45 says, When Moses told these words to all the people of Israel, the people mourned greatly. And they rose early in the morning and went to the heights of the hill country, saying, Here we are. We will go up to the place that the Lord has promised, for we have sinned. But Moses said, Why now are you transgressing the command of the Lord, when that will not succeed? Do not go up, for the Lord is not among you, lest you be struck down before your enemies. For there the Amalekites and the Canaanites are facing you, and you shall fall by the sword, because you have turned back from following the Lord. The Lord will not be with you. But they presumed to go up to the heights of the hill country, although neither the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord nor Moses departed out of the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites, who lived in that hill country, came down and defeated them and pursued them, even to Hormah. When I was a kid, we used to sing the song, Twelve Men Went to Spy on Canaan, and it retold the story of how twelve people were sent into the promised land to spy it out, to see what they were getting themselves into. And when they came back, 10 of the spies said that the people there are too great. We won't be able to defeat them. But two of them said, we need to go there for the Lord is with us and we will be able to take it because God will give us this land. Well, the people listened to the 10 who said that the enemies were too great for them and they rebelled against God. This is the aftermath of that occurrence. Here are three thoughts from Numbers chapter 14, verses 39 through 45 on why Israel was defeated. Thought number one, rebellion against God. The people of Israel rebelled against God when the Lord said, you're going to go up into this land flowing with milk and honey and all of these enemies will be defeated before you. They will, they will all be driven out. It was a great piece of news for them to hear. But when they heard what the people there were like, they were afraid. They no longer believed that the Lord was going to do what he promised and drive these people out. So they rebelled against God and said, no, we're not going to go up. After this, though, when they heard that the Lord was going to make sure that the entire generation of men would die, before he allowed the people of Israel to go into the promised land, they said, oh, wait, no, we'll go now. And in doing so, they furthered their rebellion against the Lord. Rebelling against God doesn't end up well for the people of Israel. Thought number two, God was not with them. So these people, they were trying, maybe their heart was in the right place, or perhaps they were just afraid of wandering around the wilderness for 40 years, they didn't want to die there. They wanted to go into the promised land. They thought, I'll change my mind. Instead of fearing all of these great people, I'll trust that the Lord will save me. So I'm going to go up into the land and take it. But here's the problem. They had already rebelled against God by saying they weren't going to go. And because they had already rebelled against God and said they weren't going to go, the Lord had already condemned them to wandering in the wilderness. It isn't like you can just say, I'm going to take it back when the punishment has already been pronounced. So God was not with them when they went up to move into the promised land. God wasn't with them and he wasn't driving the enemies before them. So all of the physical characteristics that made the Israelites so afraid of these Amalekites and Canaanites, well, they were all brought to bear on the folks who went up against them. God wasn't with them, so they lost the battle. Thought number three, they ignored Moses. And when the people of Israel ignore Moses, things don't turn out that great. Because Moses is the mouthpiece of God for the people of Israel. He is the one that God is using to communicate his will and his word to them. And the Lord told Moses that they were going to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. The Lord told Moses that he would not be with them if they go up and try and wage war to gain the promised land from themselves. 
by their own strength. They ignored Moses, who is the prophet of God. And when they did so, they realized just how weak they were without the Lord fighting for them. These three thoughts come to us from the assigned reading, Numbers chapters 13 through 16. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by joining the Facebook group, Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.